What's up, my YouTube friends? Today's video, we're doing a radiator. Not in my YJ, but a 2000 model Jeep Wrangler TJ. It's a 4.0 liter Jeep, but you'll see that when we start the video. See right here, we have some leakage going on. It was, it's been leaking for a while, but finally decided to change it out. So, but before we get on with the video, I want to introduce you guys to something. Check it out. I'm working on having t-shirts available for you. See there, we've got the uh, Jeep Wave peace sign in the palm. Very cool stuff. Coming soon. You'll have to go to my site to get them, though. www.fixjeeps.com Not available yet, but coming soon. So, let's get on with the video. So right under here, here's your front bumper. Follow straight back. Here's your frame horn here. Bottom of your radiator here. Right there. That's where you can do to drain your radiator. So what you want is to let that be draining while you're doing everything up top. Save yourself a little bit of time. And just be sure to pop your radiator cap too because they'll form a vacuum inside the radiator and it'll make it drain a lot slower. Notice I got the bucket because you want to protect your little critters. If you got, we got a neighborhood cat that roams around. Antifreeze tends to be really sweet. Animals love to drink it, which is very, very toxic to the animals. So always, always, always catch it. Even if you're not going to reuse it, always catch it and dispose of properly. Okay, we'll let that drain. Yeah. Okay, over here we have here and we down there is your other one. So he's working on those two and I'm gonna grab a wrench and pull these two off. That'll move this route back to where we get to the radiator. Now that we removed those four bolts and if you look between the front of the fan clutch right there and the radiator, you got plenty of room. So honestly you really don't need to pull the fan off to do this for those people who say yeah you do no you don't and some people are going to be saying why did you not pull the, the hoses I'm, i'll get dirty with the best of them as you can see but hey lessen the mess as much as possible i normally pull these last so therefore i have to deal play with much slimy antifreeze and stuff this is the factory this is the factory i almost said alternator factory radiator from 2000 and you can get a lot better view here seeing how bad it's leaking. So at this point, we're still, uh, yeah, we're through draining down there now. So I can tighten that petcock back up. And the next thing we're going to do is start popping the hoses and take these uh, bolts out here. So you got one here, there, and one three way on down the under. Three on each side. Yes, three on each side. And if you look, there's that hole. See where my finger's at? There is a hole through the front core support. Or through the radiator brackets here that you can get your socket into and one way down there see if we can look up the the new ones if it shows on those yeah because here those bolts i'm referring to on the jeep right now that's where they're going through right here you'll notice oh go straight through right there and that's where you can get your ratchet in through this one you got a hook system kind of going on here these are on the outside so they're not too hard to get to but this one straight through those holes and before y'all ask they're 10 millimeter i should have said that huh yeah well uh, look way down there here's my ratchet that one is a little bit of a bear to get to if you don't pull your fan but the trick to it is keep pushing back on the shroud it's not going anywhere make sure you pick up enough sit on top of that fan cram your arm down through there and you get to the ratchet right there what i'm using is a 10 millimeter of course but as i mentioned a moment ago by using a deep well it's perfect depth to get through that hole and get to the bolts so 10 millimeter deep is a perfect setup for that see the little thumb ratchet once you get them loosened up that thing is a lifesaver especially right down that hole now over here when you're taking the radiator out this hose right here this is your vent hose for your front differential 
whenever you're out four wheeling and you're getting in some deep water you don't want to take in water in your front diff because well it's just not healthy for it this is the bent that equalizes pressure from the front diff so your top bolt on your radiator is where that's going to go back so don't forget to put that back because you don't want this going to go under water if you're out playing in the creek somewhere well that top hose right there just simply take your channel locks Get a good bite on it. All right, the top radiator hose. Take your channel locks. Get a good bite on that uh, clamp. Squeeze it. I'm doing this to hold the camera both. Anyway, you do that and slide it back. I think we need to take one more notch from your channel locks. Street. And that's how you unhook a top radiator hose. Now you do the bottom the same way, which is way down yonder. Yeah, there it is. Way down. So you gotta get it from the bottom. Alright, uh, whenever you pull the hoses, you can squeeze and pull and all this right here. More times than not, if you take the hose, kind of can it back at an angle a little bit and just rock it. Just slide right out there. Now the bottom one we did did it the same way. Take a hook up behind your AC hose and it'll hold it out of the way for you. The bottom one we did the same way. We did lose just a little bit of antifreeze just because it's got a puddle down there inside the radiator itself. So just be sure that when you get through the job, water down your driveway, whatever, to dilute off that antifreeze. No harming to the kitties or the puppies or and just lifts right out. Ta-da! And look at all the dead critters. And grass and everything else. Ray airs out. Time to put the new one in. Yeah, just for kicks and giggles, we can do a little side by side uh, comparison. Now, here's where I've shown you run your socket through the bracketry. You got the same thing on the replacement radiator here. And really, the only physical difference we're seeing here is that the this one has the automatic ports for your trans cooler, but if you don't need them, just plug them off, call it done, no big deal. Uh, over here we have the same little nosh. You put that bottom bolt in right there, drop the radiator in, it just kind of snags and holds it right there and holds it in place before you wait for the rest of the bolts in. Pecock same place, hoses are the same place, so it looks like we're good to go. Alright, make a little tip here for you. You notice earlier when I mentioned about the little hooks here. But I'm turning the camera around to make you guys sideways and dizzy. The little gaps right there. The very bottom bolts there. Put them in. And when you do, that way you take the radiator, it'll slide right in. And those hooks, the little, no little notch right there, will slide right up top of those bolts and they'll hold the radiator in place for you while you do the rest of your bolts. And as he slides it in there, just a bent tube out of the way. Get my fat arm out of the way of the camera. There it is. Sits in there like a glove. And it'll have to be picked up just a little bit for those holes to line up. But the thing of it is, those bottom holes are holding it in place for you. So at this point, we're just putting bolts back in. Okay, once we got the radiator set in, we got the bolts put in. And remember, here's your vent tube for your front diff. Be sure to put that on. Now we're going to take us the shroud. We can go ahead and put it in place and we'll put our hoses on. So take the shroud, just line it up. And basically, turn the camera around here. Now you just get one of your holes lined up, and do, 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 do. all right, people, deal with me here. Get like that. You hold the shroud back a little bit. That way, you can see where the the point of the bolt's coming through. Hit the hole of the radiator bracket, and. Screw it in a little bit, then come over to the other side and do the same thing. Right through to where you can see the tip, you can see the bracket. Put in the whole bracket, turn a couple threads. And that's all you gotta do, then you reach down for the bottom ones that they're automatically gonna be lined up. And you tighten them up. Alright, as we're putting this in, we start discovering it's being a little bit on the cranky side. 
those bolts seem to be like we're cutting the threads in forward. I didn't look at the radiator too close to see if it had threads already started. I already tapped into the body of the uh, radiator. So what I was doing, take the ratchet, put it on there, push the ratchet in hard, push it in hard into the ra uh, radiator as you turn it. It's going to cause those threads to start biting. And it may end up be cutting its own set of threads back into it. But once you cut one set of threads, it's going to be good to go from that point on. Even after taking it out, putting it back in, whatever case you may have to. But it really feels like we're cutting new threads into it. Now, do not tighten these until you get the bottom one in. Because if you do, if you tighten this one first, I promise you, you're going to have a headache on the bottom. So, let's get our bottom bolt started now before we tighten up any of the rest of them. Alright, we got the shroud in place now. We're going to go ahead and put our hoses on. I guess while I'm talking about the Rock Auto uh, radiator, I don't know if the camera picks it up. If you look at the cores, there is a... Let's see if I can point it out. you got your big wide cores right here. In the middle of that core is a support right there. That goes that runs the length of those runners right there, which really helps support your core as far as pressures, water flow, stuff like that. So these are actually very good quality radiators unlike the factory one that does not have a support did it work yeah it worked great the factory one did but of course it leaked and that's the main reason for changing it now let's put our hose back on oh yep our ac lines are holding it out of the way but look right no here's the other ac line what you could do whenever you get rid of your old boots or your old shoes don't throw your strings away why because you got a heater hose right here so if this hose was in the way you can take your radiator hose back here and tie your shoestring around that and hold it out of your way. Keep it simple, people. Make life easy on yourself. Shoestrings are a lifesaver. So slide that baby on there. Then we'll take that clamp like we did earlier. Squeeze it, put it on there. Do the bottom one the same way. Now that we got our hoses on, be sure before we put any water in to check your uh, petcock drain here. Turn it this way, opens it. This way, closes it. So this side here, you want to push that wing down to be sure it's closed. And if you want to second guess your chef, you can get you a little bit of water, pour it in the radiator before you start pouring the expensive antifreeze and stuff in. But this side of the wing, push it down like this, closes it up. So we got the hose on and shroud on. So it's time to put a little bit of put a little bit of water up in this thing, antifreeze. Okay, we got this here and here this groove and there's a key slot in this groove here so you take this tab get myself in my face with a hose that drops in that tab there bring this down now it's not just going to sit in there initially what you got to do is get to that point pull back on it here push against it then come down Ta -da! put the hose on and you're good to go. Hey everyone, I hope you got something from that video. I hope you learned something. Look over here. Here's this old junky radiator laying here with all the crud and holes in it. So, then we have your nice, pretty, nice, shiny aluminum one. And we showed you how to put it in. So, if you like that video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. If you subscribe, every time I put out a video, you'll get an email saying, Yo, I done put out another video. Gotta go check it out. And also, comments down below. Whenever you drop comments in, make some comments that hey, you know, I tried it this way and it worked a lot better. I don't mind a bit if you guys show me a better trick because now it uh, teaches me something. My viewers, they get to learn something new. So, thumbs up, comment, subscribe. And everyone, peace out. Later, y'all. Oh, don't forget www.fixjeeps.com. You can't forget my site. Go check it out. Peace.